Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have another mail day video and it's going to be chock full today because yes, I've got some post, two very nice envelopes with some sweet cards hopefully in them. But also I want to share with you my pickups at the Reggie Bull series. And the Reggie Bull series is named after this dude, the 2-2 creature with the very cool flavor text. And um, I already had this card, so I didn't pick it up at the Raging Bull series. I only have one though, and I'm not parting with it. I'm keeping it, probably also gonna play with it maybe at the Raging Bull series next year. Uh, it was just a lot of fun. And what it is, it's an old school magic tournament, fully Swedish, held in Amsterdam. So in my hometown, so it's just a 10 minute walk. We had a super cool live stream from the event together with Richard and Dion. It was just uh, tons of fun. Uh, if you want to look at that, by the way, I'll probably have a pop-up here of that live stream. It is a bit long, so <laughs> good luck. I think 10 hours, 10 plus or something, but it was a lot of fun. And I picked up some very cool patches. So this is from my friends from Spain. And uh, it's really nice, by the way, there's a story behind this patch. So uh, the money from this patch, so I got the patch and then I could donate an amount of money and that would go to a children's hospital where they do cancer research. So you can also see it's a charity gargoyle. So that's pretty sweet. And of course, it's just a beautiful patch. I also got, got this patch. This is the logo of uh, the Dutch old school guild. Yeah, they just make the coolest stuff. I already had their sticker. I also have their pin, of course, you know, being Dutch myself. So this is their sticker. And uh, But now I also have a patch. So I'm super happy with that. Thank you, Avert. And then I met some friends from Norway and look at their sticker. How cool is that? Norwegian old school MTG. Super cool. They also gave me a pin. This is just a very, very cool logo. Very cool guys as well. They always built interesting decks in Norwegian. So there were some really cool decks on the stream also. So I'm looking forward to kind of make episodes out of that as well. Then um, I also did some pickups at Vainant, who's the local vendor. Look at this beauty. I mean, I had, I had to pick up this Sengir Vampire. Look, look at it. <laughs> I don't know. What has happened? I asked Wijnand, the dealer, Power Negen, what has happened to this card? He had no idea. And uh, I think he actually just gave it to me. This is going into my uh, unsleeved collection. So this will see some unsleeved play in, a, in my revised deck. And then I'm also working on a new holiday deck. This is quite nice. So I was able to get four Swords to Plowshares, black bordered, Italian, and they're signed as well. So I'm just gonna show it, show them to you here. Take a moment. I mean, look at that, right? It's really cool. And I love the fact that they all have the same signature. And they're black bordered. So I'm making a white weenie holiday deck as I call them. So that's gonna be completely, um, gonna be completely made up out of foreign cards. And with foreign in this case, I mean in, in a different language than English. Very cool, right? So four of these, super happy with them. And um, I was able to actually pick up some more foreign cards. If you look at this, so we've got the Winds of Change and we've got a Whirling Dervish, always good as a sideboard card. We've got a lovely signed Blue Elemental Blast Signed by, of course, the artist Richard Thomas. We've got a Kismet. Handy little card from Legends, originally. Then we've got a Moral. Gives plus one, plus one to all your creatures, attacking creatures, that is. The Thunder Wolves. So all these cards are from foreign sets. Iron Claw Orcs. Primordial Ooze, I believe. This is such a cool card to just, and as you can see, it was just 10 cents. So I just had to take it with me. I think the coloring of the foreign cards is very pretty. And I, these cards are just really interesting to brew around. And it's just really sweet if you can uh, pick them up so cheap. So this is, I uh, just take it out of the sleeve. It's kind of dark at the moment here. Let's see if we can get a little bit more light. Here we go. So this Coloss Colossus of Sardia, right? 99 Trampler from the Antiquities expansion. Lady Orca. Who's still Lady Orca, even though it's a different language. Yeah, and this is really beautiful, right? The princess. What a fairy tale card. It's a really cool card. Another Whirling Dervish. 
an Inferno Medusa. Really sweet. I mean, look at the colors. Love the art. And this is kind of the Thicket Basilisk of black, right? It basically has the same effect. It's also a 2 4, it's also 5 mana. And then, yeah, look at this art. So, this is one of those Legends lands, right? So, this says uh, legendary black creatures gain banning with other black legendary creatures, right? That's what these lands do, and they don't tap for mana, unfortunately. If they did, they would kind of be playable. But I mean, just look at the art. Amazing. Mark Pool. All, all the lands in that cycle, in my opinion, are just stunning. Okay, and then we're going to have a look at this pack. So my brother was there as well, Yoop, and he brought this pack for me. And uh, no idea what's... Well, I kind of know what's in here. I think some Homelands cards, if you remember the mail day of two weeks ago when I got booster packs of Homelands and I decided to go and collect Homelands, he was like, well, I actually have some Homelands. So I think you're going to enjoy these. So let's open it up. Let's see what's in here. So we've got an Unholy Strength. Foreign, obviously. Black bordered, but it doesn't have the pentagram of the original. Very cool. I already seen Anava Township there. We're gonna look at that in a moment. Uh, oh, we have another card. Oh, wow, nice. Nice. The guys, guys to the facet. Um, they're the chains, right? If if you attack. You enchant on the creature. If that creature attacks and becomes tapped, there's a minus O minus two counter that's being put on the creature, I believe. So it's yeah, it's kind of like this really complicated way to get rid of a creature, but hey, it's it's creature removal. Beautiful coloring. It's a German version, I believe, looking at the language. And then here we go. Here we've got some nice homeland cards that actually I need for my homeland's co collection. We've got an Anhaba Township. That's pretty sweet. Sengir Bats with an art that I didn't have yet. And then we've got the Folk of Anhava. The interesting thing of the art is when you look close, she's actually not that old. Like, don't get me wrong, she's not young, but when you look at from farther away, let me zoom in properly again, she looks like really old, like a granny, but when you look closer, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but when you look closer, she kind of looks younger. Um, Feast of the Unicorn. Yeah, this is a type of art I don't have yet. Remember, Homelands was still one of the sets where they had different types of art for the commons. So when you're collecting the set, you also want to have all the different types of art, of course. Another Feast of the Unicorn, but then different art. So here you can see that, right? The same card, different art. Also, the same artist. Ooh, that's also nice. So the same artist gives you two different interpretations of the art of the card. That's kind of nice. And we've got Torture. Yeah, the art here is just phenomenal. Phenomenal. Oh, man, I, I wouldn't want to be this guy. I mean, this is not ending well. Torture, again, a card that works with counters. So uh, it's kind of interesting. So you choose a creature, you pay one black and one, and you put a minus one, minus one um, on counter on target creature to torture and chance. Pretty interesting, another tour. Okay, I'm not sure why I need multiple torches, but <laughs> thank you. Oh, Castle Sengir, that is sweet. I'm really happy with that. And also Prophecy, where you see the Eisen shade in the eye. I just love the art again. But yeah, there's an epic card, of course, Castle Sengir. I just wish they would have done, you know, one and tap blue, one and tap red, and just tap for black. You know what I mean? Then the card would be super playable. Unless, uh, I mean, unfortunately, they decided otherwise. It is what it is. It is what it is. Prophecy, maybe I can discuss what it does really quickly. Instant, no sorcery for one, not an instant. Reveal the top card of target opponent's library to all players. If it is a land, you gain one life. That opponent then shuffles his or her library, draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. So this is one of those cantrips that you saw in Ice Age for the first time. So Prophecy, pretty pretty weak card, but there could be scenarios where it could be useful. You, of course, have some cards, um, like you have the Counterspell in Homelands, Memory Lapse, where the opponent has to put it back 
on the top of their library, then you can combine that with Prophecy so that they have to shuffle that card back into their library. So that would be a nice little, you know, synergy, a little combo that you can play this card with. And then we also have these. So these are obviously opened boosters, but still really cool boosters. Busta Secunda Edizione. Really sweet to have these older booster packs. Great, thank you for adding it. So this is the Italian Revised, isn't it? I think so, I think so. So I'm collecting booster packs as well. So this is gonna go in my um, collection. Thank you very much, Yoop. Super cool, super cool, man. And then we've got some cards in here. Maybe this is what he found in there. Oh, this is actually the not revised. Could it then be fourth edition? Because it says second edition and it's not black bordered. So I guess it's the fourth or fifth edition of the Italian reprint. Anyway, we've got a swamp. We've got a forest. We've got a mountain. Ooh, do we just have a little land pack here? That would be sweet. Oh no, we don't. We got a blessing. Benedizione. So an enchant creature and then that creature has one plus one plus one. Look at how empty the box is, by the way. Very cool. A tunnel destroys target wall. An often troll, Trolli di Othon. We've got a giant growth. We have a plague rats. We've got a wall of woods, a power sink, unstable mutation, shatter, war mammoth, hill giants, a fear. That's it. That's what we have. Well, no, we still have this Homelands pack. I wonder what's in here. Oh, more Homelands. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Well, it makes sense in a Homelands pack that we find more Homelands. So that's pretty cool. I think I already have some of these in my collection, but I'll have a look. Thank you very much. Ebony Rhino. That card just cracks me up. Seven mana for a four or five Trampler. Really? So funny. And then we've got an Abbey Matron. I have this one for sure. Dark Mace. Dry Spell. I don't think I have the art of this specific Dry Spell. Really nice. Look at that art. Super cool, right? So deals one damage to each creature and each player. Very simple card. I wish it was an instant. And it would be kind of, I could do something with it if it would be an instant. Winter Sky. Winter Sky is quite interesting as a card. So one red and you got to flip a coin. Target opponent calls hats or tails while the coin is in the air. If the flip, flip ends up in your favor, Winter Sky deals one damage to each creature and player. Otherwise, each player draws a card. So it's not like, you know, it's not super, but I kind of like the fact that if the flip doesn't end up in your favor, you still get to draw a card, which can be useful. I don't know. It's just a fun, I like cards where you flip coins. It's, it's not good actually, but still, I like it. Ooh, yeah, Rashka the Slayer. So this is five mana, right? For a, what is it, a three, three creature that can block creatures with flying, of course, because she's got a bow and arrow. And if assigned to block any black creatures, she actually gets a bonus. So she becomes a four, five. That is pretty strong, but not strong enough to kick Baron Sengir's ass. So she's not gonna win it against Baron Sengir. But still, she comes pretty close when she becomes a 4-5 block in the Baron. The Baron, of course, being a 5-5, five five, it's the end of the road for the Slayer. Kind of cool, cool card. I just like the flavor of Homelands. I do. Maybe maybe you think I'm crazy, but I do. Um, okay, so let's just, you know, start with the envelopes here. Let's get a pair of scissors. Oh, man, this is a pretty long nail day video, by the way. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, let me know what, what cards you like about my pickups or don't, or if you like foreign cards as well, we'd love to hear from you. So this is fact, I believe this is actually more foreign cards for my uh, white project. Okay, we've got, I don't know, we've got something. We've got, what is this? Okay, and then we get to the goods, maybe. It's a pretty big pack. That's nice. 
Oh yes, Mie Jin. Now I remember. So I've got a I've got a deck which is completely it's my holiday deck. It's completely black bordered, mono red, only foreign cards, and I play Aladdin in it and Flying Carpet. And then somebody said, you know, wait a minute, you're playing Aladdin and Flying Carpet, but what's coming, you know, Aladdin, and you need a Jin to go with Aladdin. And then I thought, wait a minute, I'm playing Mono Red. I can play Mie Jin, which is a super cool card. So it's a 6-3 creature from Arabian Nights for 3 red. So you got to be pretty committed to the color red. When you attack, you got to flip a coin, okay? And if the flip ends up in your favor, it just attacks as normal. If the flip ends up against your favor, it deals no damage and it becomes tapped. So, you know, that's kind of the thing that happens. So when you attack with it, you've got two options. Of course, the downside of the card as well is that it only has three toughness. So it is boltable, unfortunately. It's also cyblastable. So I wish they would have maybe made it a 4-4 four, four for three. That would have been kind of interesting. Then again, no, that wouldn't be cool. For, it needs to be a 6-3. It needs to be unbalanced. That's kind of the fun of the card. Forget about that comment. I'm very happy with the 6-3 balance. I think it's super cool. Um, and you just have to be lucky. And if you're not, you're not. So maybe I'm just going to make a deck with Bottle of Suleiman as well and put a gin in it. And I don't know. Go with the whole theme. Let me know. Maybe that would be fun. And we've got one, two, three, three of these. Let's just have a closer look at the art. It is a cool dude. With the arms, like, here I am. Very cool. And then we've got, oh yeah, we've got the disenchant. So you already saw the swords. And then of course, in that same deck, I'm gonna put some disenchants, cause yeah, kind of a staple when you're playing white. So I've got four of those lovely disenchants. So wow, that's great. The deck is slowly building up the mono white deck. That's good, I like it. And we've got one more. I think in here we're gonna find an Armageddon, I think. Let me check the letter, if there's nothing on here. No personal details. Whoa, okay, I just ripped off the cards here. <laughs> Why not? Oh no, 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 look what I did. Oh, fudge. Okay, very careful, very careful. Oh no, I'm making it worse. Careful, oof, okay. Saved it, it's, it's safe, don't worry, it's safe. Sorry, Mia Jin, I apologize. Okay, where were, were we? Okay, we have this. Get it out of the sleeve. Get out of here. Oh, another disenchant, but I already have. Okay, well, thank you, pretty cool. Armageddon, ah, there we go, Armageddon. Yeah, pretty sweet. I believe this is a Spanish Armageddon 5th edition, but it could be wrong. Let me know in the comments below if you're absolutely sure. So um, I also have Italian land taxes. So they're gonna go in the same deck. And then, hey, Blanish, Benalish Hero, two of those. I can, they're, they're playable in White Weenie. I, I can make them work, yeah. So um, this is it. That was a full on mail day video. Woo, so lots and lots of cool cards and goodies. Um, thank you to everybody who attended the Raging Bull series this year, by the way. It was just a lot of fun. Also, thanks to all the people that viewed the live feed and were on the stream. It was uh, it was cool, definitely. I'm already looking forward to next year. And for now, thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. See you next time. Oh, wait, before I forget, I'm going to stick on the sticker of the Norwegian old schoolers. So let's... Open it up. I think I'm going to put it here. This kind of fits. Uh, let me put this here. I'm just going to take it off. There we go. Okay. We're going to put it on top of the Lord of the Pit. And boom, look at that. It fits perfectly. Let's see if I can still close the box with the magnets because they're on the other side. Well, that works. That is nice. So then if I open it, here we go. How cool is that? What shall we do with the donkeys?
Ik het is somber gezien.